Hey guys, Maxwell Murphy here. I want to talk today about your job. Well, not really your job, but I want to talk about jobs. Um, one thing I've been thinking about lately is that there are two types of jobs in the world. The first type is the type of job where you know how to do what you need to do and you just do it, right? You just deliver. Uh, you've been trained, you get the training up front, you know, how to, you know what you need to do, you know how to do it, and you do it. Type two is the type of a job where you have skills and training or whatever up front, but you go out there and you're facing challenges every day that you don't know how to do it, right? You don't know exactly how to get it done. You gotta figure it out, you gotta scramble, you gotta tinker, uh, you gotta get online, you gotta search, you gotta call your friends, you gotta read documentation. You're constantly trying to figure stuff out. Um, so those are the two types of jobs. And I think every, t every job falls into one category or the other. And it's it, not to say that, it, that it's like if you're an engineer, you're necessarily in one category or the other. If you're a magician, you're necessarily in one category or the other. You know, if you're an engineer, you might just be doing uh, the same things over and over again, doing them really well, uh, things you know how to do. Or, or you might be constantly trying to figure out how to make something work, how to uh, build something new, um, where you, know, you don't have any certainty that it'll actually even be possible, but you go into it with confidence and you try to figure out how to get it done. Um, and magicians the same way, you know, a lot of guys uh, know the tricks that they're gonna do and they know how to perform, they know how to talk to the client, they know how to do all the things, they go out and they just basically do it every time when they work. And there are other magicians like you know, Franz Harari is a great example where you know, much of his time is spent doing gigs where he goes into it not knowing exactly how he's gonna pull it off. You know, I was with him on a gig in China where it was his job to figure out how to make a portion of the Great Wall of China disappear, right? And not, not that there was a, any small amount of pressure on it, there was huge money riding on it and uh, you know, a lot of pressure, ton of people uh, around and here we were a team of people uh, working with Franz to try to figure out how to make this enormous structure vanish and so we're surveying the land we're doing all these different things and Franz just had this inner confidence the whole time He's, he knows he can make it happen right he knows he'll figure out one way or another no matter what he'll figure out how to make that illusion happen um, and sure enough he did but it drove me crazy I mean I was inside I was all tense and I'm, I'm you know, freaking out inside, thankful that it wasn't my name on the line, um, because I didn't know how we were going to pull it off. And I've seen him, I've seen Franz do it a lot of other times when he's working for big music stars. So, you know, he, they might have an idea for an illusion that they want to pull off. And, uh, you know, he tells them, yeah, he, we can do it. And then, you know, he shows up and he figures out how to make it happen. Uh, in, in Thailand, there was a gig I was with them on where um, he had to make a car vanish uh, from the center of the stage and it wasn't like it was a, a fun little optional thing this was like the car company was a major sponsor of the event so it had to happen and sure enough Franz figured out a way to make it happen but uh, just his approach the way that he goes into it and explores and tinkers and thinks about all the methods he knows you know all the resources that that are present in the venue and the land and and the people and everything and figures out the best possible way to pull this thing off so this, this whole type two thing is something that I'm not very comfortable with. I tend to gravitate more toward type one. I like repetition. I like knowing how to do something. I like doing it. I like doing it well. Um, my brother's very much on the other side. He's much more of a tinkerer. He enjoys the challenge of figuring it out and, and you know, this being on new ground all the time. And I think that, that you know, I'm trying to make myself more of a type two type of person. You know, I'm trying to get myself... Um, to not think of the world so much in terms of what I know how to do, but in, in terms of what I want to do, you know, in, in terms of thinking of it, in, you know, like with your magic, you know, don't get stuck behind what do I know how to do, uh, you know, think much more about what would I want to do or, or what, what does a client want me to be able to do. And then just go, up, you know, approach that task with, with a confidence um, and, and a persistence and just figure out a way to make it happen. So I'm pushing myself toward type two, uh, but it's, I go kicking and screaming because it, it does make me a little bit uncomfor uncomfortable to be on uh, that uncharted territory and, and to be kind of fumbling around in the dark. It does make me uncomfortable, but I think it's a big area of improvement that, that I can make um, in my life and my skills. And I think it's something that's gonna be increasingly valuable 
in the future as jobs continue to change and morph and the world gets to be a crazier and crazier, more exciting, more fun, more wild, more magical place. So that's the idea for you today. Uh, what type of job do you have? Uh, leave me in the comments. And if, if you have any tips for me to help push myself into type two territory, if there's any thought patterns or, or things that you tell yourself or that you think about yourself uh, that help you to push into that un unexplored territory, let me know in the comments.